In my latest trip to Taipei, I chose to stay in the W Taipei. In planning my trip, I thought of staying in the Park Hyatt Anders Hotel or the Rosewood Hotel, but the former had experienced significant delays and is not expected to open within this year, while the latter seemed to be in its planning stage and won't be ready until at least 2024. In deciding whether to stay in a Mandarin Oriental or W, the only factor that WH.MO is its location, which is located in the Xinyi District, where I can shop till I drop. Plus, I've stayed in this hotel in 2018, and provided its service is still consistent, it's going to be a good choice for me. Upon check-in, I was really thrilled to know that I've been upgraded to the Marvelous Suite, which, as you can see in this vlog, is very spacious and comfy. The reason for this unexpected upgrade was quote unquote the high demand of the rooms, which I took it as a more subtle way to say that my room was unavailable. That I don't mind. If you have watched my videos of other W hotels worldwide, you would not be mistaken that this is another W hotel, as there's quite a number of hip and chic elements that you will find in a typical W hotel. What I like the most is that the room has maintained some fun elements of W hotels without being too over the top. Whether it's the comfortable bed or the Momo bathroom amenities, loyal customers won't be mistaken as other five-star hotels. For breakfast, I have to say the ones that I had in 2018, other than kitchen table, was one of the best among W hotels. Now that it's closed for renovation, we were sent to W's Chinese restaurant Yan for breakfast. I was a bit disappointed by the Western-style breakfast. In particular, I found sausages soaked underwater unacceptable. That said, it did have some decent Chinese-style breakfast, but as an international five-star hotel, I think they should give more effort in improving the Western ones. Also, the setting of the tables, which, due to its limitation as a Chinese restaurant, was a bit awkward. There were very few small tables, and during busy hours, I was sent to a big round table, and people are expected to join in. This is really not desirable. All right, since I've dined in the Yen Chinese restaurant, it's only logical for me to try their Chinese cuisine. I've ordered the 2,580 Taiwanese dollars at dinner, which is their cheapest set. First, let's see the appetizers, which consist of drunken chicken with Shaoxing wine jelly, jellyfish tossed with sesame oil, and seared sweetfish with Yilan scallion. The so-called drunken chicken was filled with the fragrance of Shaoxing wine, and the texture is also refreshing. The jellyfish is smooth with sesame oil, and the texture is also fresh. The taste of the sweet fish is sour and sweet, and the texture is also not bad, quite refreshing as well. This double boiled chicken soup with winkle red date and dry scallop is suitably seasoned, not too salty and not too thick, and you can taste all the essence of the ingredients. Not bad. The texture of this steamed giant garoupa is quite al dente, and the garlic and black bean sauce in this dish actually elevate the overall taste of the garoupa. The bean curd underneath has added smoothness in the overall texture of this dish, which I'm actually quite impressed. A berico was used for this sweet and sour pork with strawberry and pineapple. While pineapple is a very common ingredient for Chinese-style sweet and sour pork, the use of strawberry is actually very creative, as well as the use of black vinegar. Both the use of black vinegar and strawberry had elevated the sweet and sour taste of this dish and made the overall palate experience more fruity. The taste of the berico is also very impressive, and I consider this dish the highlight of the set dinner. This poached lover with salted egg is a very typical Chinese dish, which is famous for its very soothing and balanced taste. The lover is fully immersed in the stock and made this dish even more tasty and fresh. But the texture of this braised ifu noodle with chives is a little bit chewy. It's still acceptable. The soy sauce used for the noodles is very tasty. For dessert, they have offered egg tart and almond tofu. The egg tart is not very warm and the tart is a bit hot, but the egg inside is actually quite creamy. While for the almond tofu, the soup is full of the scent of almond, but in my opinion, it's a bit sweet. Mix in with tofu, and the taste will be more balanced. As for the fresh fruit platter, it's just forgettable. Overall, this is an okay experience, but made me miss Mo's Michelin one-star Chinese restaurant Yaga even more. As always, I will talk about the fitness facilities after the dining experience. First, I'm taking you to the pool, which is another highlight of this hotel. Like its sister hotels, there is a wet bar beside the pool. You can also order drinks while sunbathing under the heat in Taipei. The pool is about 25 meters long. While it claimed to be a heated swimming pool and the temperature was supposed to be set at 29 degrees Celsius, I found the water extremely cold despite the fact that the outdoor temperature is more than 30 degrees Celsius. That said, I found the place very chill and relaxing. Just that you may not experience the vibe in some other W hotels. 
For the gym, having stayed in this hotel in 2018, I found the facilities to be well kept and adequately equipped. It is also spacious, and the staff is very helpful. Overall, this is a very pleasant staying experience. While there are some hiccups during my stay, like miscommunication that led to delay in sending my luggages to my room, and one of the room service staff forgot to replenish the toilet papers properly, it has not significantly impacted my overall impression in staying in this hotel. As after all, those hiccups would be made oblivious when they have upgraded my room to this beautiful suite.